take it everybody's doing all right tonight, huh? Good to be in New York City. Yes, indeed. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. You're not going to believe tonight's show. You're just not going to believe it. No, just not going to believe it either. It's unbelievable how many requests I get for new chicken dishes. It's everybody starting to cook. It was salmon for a while. It's back over now to chicken. And then guess what? We're getting a lot of requests for Chinese recipes. Simple Chinese recipes to cook at home as well. Yeah. So tonight, I said to myself, Self! Self! Give you folks double for your money. <laughs> We're going to do a show on Asian poultry. How's that? <laughs> So we're going to start with a great appetizer with chicken wings, and I'm going to show you a great sauce with them. I'm going to use, oh, a squab. <laughs> Indigestion again? Squab. You know what that is? A young pigeon. Not the kind from the building. <laughs> These are all farm-raised and all this stuff. Okay. Squab. We're going to fry it up crispy with a homemade plum sauce. Where do you see what I'm going to do with these chicken thighs? I got these chicken thighs that get braised in ginger and cinnamon and sherry. Oh! And then I'm going to share a new dish from my new restaurant, Chop Chop. I'm going to show you a stir-fry of chicken. Oh, wait, you'll see. Hey, speaking about stirring things up, <laughs> Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Lab. <laughs> Asian chicken. Asian poultry. Poultry. Asian poultry. Poultry. Gotcha. Chicken recipes number one, Chinese recipes for Chinese cuisine, and then salmon. Ooh. I'm ready. But tonight, it's Asian poultry right here on Emerald Live! Hey guys, nice welcome to, to the show. Right. See, I told you these weren't the cheap seats, right? Yeah. How you doing? Oh boy, smelling good over here. You must be all happy. Yeah. Yeah. Very happy. Usually it smells foul. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, we got a lot of stuff going on here, particularly these sort of this area right here with the star anise and red pepper and all this wonderful flavors. And that's exactly what I want to point out. I'm going to take some simple poultry pots tonight that you can buy very inexpensively. I mean, chicken wings, chicken thighs. I mean, this isn't like rocket science here. And then using some wonderful Asian techniques and ingredients, some of their spices, we're going to take something so simple and really just kick it up, is what I say, kick yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So let's begin the evening. <laughs> Happy Mardi Gras. <laughs> All right, here we go. First, I want to start this sauce for these chicken drumettes. So I got a sauce pot. What I'm going to start with is I got a little Saki. I love this. 
Nothing like good sake, ice cold. Oh, yeah. Guess you had to been there. A little sesame oil. Soy sauce. Oh, all these favorite ingredients. A little orange juice. Rice wine vinegar. Now I'm gonna add garlic in here, okay? As, oh yeah, man. Some ginger. A little bit of green onion. I think we need a little more sake. Oh yeah. Everything all right over there, buddy? <laughs> Cleaning out the valves or something? <laughs> Just checking. I got to keep an eye on these guys. If it's not Doc stealing something, I'm not even going there right now. Gee, some sugar, which is kind of going to, when this reduces down, the sugar's really going to make it like this syrupy consistency. Okay, and then you want it spicy? Yes! So we're going to add some crushed red pepper. I'm sorry, Rhoda. We're having it spicy tonight. And... I love a little zest, right, of the orange. We could use lemon. Folks, when you want to do that, do it over what you use and what you're cooking, if it's a dressing or whatever, because when you zest it over it, all those oils are going inside of that. All, I call them yummies, okay? You may call them oils. I call them yummies. And don't waste those yummies. So we're going to add the zest in here now. You see the oil just kind of squirt right out? People zest ahead of time, put it inside the ice box. You know, an hour goes by and the yummies are gone. That's just my opinion. So I got the yummies happening here. All right. Now, get rid of some of this. We're going to bring it up to a simmer. Now, I've got this sort of blend that I make of this Asian essence. Five spice little cinnamon, little lemon peel. It's wonderful stuff. You can make your own. But what we got, I got some of that spice, and I'm going to season my cornstarch. This is cornstarch in a bag. Why? Why? Because I don't know where you get your cornstarch, where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. <laughs> that would be why. So we're going to have some of that in here. And then... We're going to go get these chicken drumettes. Now, oh, yeah, they're cheap. In New York, they're like one for a dollar, you know? I'm just teasing. You want to rinse them really good. Dry them, wash them. You know the chicken laws. You know the police out there. You know? Ah! If you're going to use chicken, all the bathtubs should be running in your house, the sinks. Don't take any chances. Wash your hands 52 times, and then you're ready. And then, let me just show you what we're going to do. You take one of these big zip bags like this. Then I like to take a little bit more of that Asian spice and season up some of those a little at a time. Because, hey, now we put them inside here, inside of the bag. <laughs> See? Then, a little at a time, we zip this up. Oh, yeah, zip it up. Make sure it's zipped. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll be looking pretty funny if not. God, you got so old. <laughs> then you just kind of shake it up like this with them essence, you see? All right? You with me so far? Yeah. Okay, now what you do... Shake it off the excess. Vegetable oil about 360 degrees. We're going to stop frying these, okay? When we come back, I'm going to show you what they look like in our sticky sauce. Stick around. Doc Gibson, the Everlasting. <laughs> Thank you.
folks, welcome back. Emerald Lagasse, we're cooking a little Asian poultry tonight, but before we even go there, because we've got those drumettes inside of the uh, hot oil, one batch out, one batch in, coming back to that. Hey, we got Cliff on keyboards. <laughs> we got Lewis on horns tonight. <laughs> Captain T, or as we call him, Teddy, on drums. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And everybody knows Doc Gibbs is in the house. <laughs> Folks, whenever you're frying anything, chicken, vegetables, whatever, when it comes out of the hot oil, that would be a good time to season it, whether it's with salt and pepper, whether it's with a little essence, Asian essence, whatever. <laughs> That's when you want to do that. Now, because we really cook on this show, Oh, you didn't know that? You think we're flopping a few turkeys back there? We're going to wait on this batch that's being fried right now, okay? 360 degrees, nice vegetable oil, second batch. Look, see, I got a lot of paper towel here. You could use cloth towel. You don't want them greasy. Everybody thinks if you fry something, it's bad for you. It's only bad for you if you fry bad. If you fry a good way, or the right way, then it's not bad. So, <laughs> on you bad fryer people. Now, I got this squab dish. I'm going to show you this technique. I got two squabs. You can do this with Cornish hen. You can do this with, uh, I'll tell you what we do this technique with. We do it with duck. I mean, the amount of fat level that duck has, this is a good technique to, to do this with. What am I talking about? Okay, first of all, I got a little pot here with some salted water. How do I know it's salted? Because <laughs> I'm salting it. Now, what we do is we take the little squab, Cornish hen, duck, however. Obviously, if you're doing this with a duck or two, you'd need a little bigger pot. It's amazing when you cook how that common sense thing comes to play. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of what we call blanch. We're going to blanch these squabs in a little water like this. What does that do? Well, it does a couple of things. First of all, we're going to be able to, the end result, we're going to get some really crispy stuff later, like I said, particularly with duck. Two, we're kind of flushing it out a little bit, but more importantly, what we're doing is we're kind of forming the structure of it. Okay, so it doesn't go all over the place, you know? The wing up here and the thighs over here and, you know, structure. We all need a little structure every now and then. <laughs> so, let's check on our wings. Oh, no. Nope. Now, second thing. I want to sort of make a little liquid, happy liquid, so that after I take him out and he's got structure, we can make them in happy, put them in some happy juice. <laughs> now, what that is, we're going to take some chicken broth. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add to the chicken broth some green onions or scallions. Lots of garlic, okay? Lots of garlic. <laughs> Brown sugar. Ginger, soy sauce, a little sesame. Oh, I can smell this already. Then, I want to add a little spice to this. If you don't want it spicy, hey, that's okay. A little crushed red pepper. And then I got some honey. And a little Worcestershire. Now, <laughs> well, all right. One other thing is that I got rice wine vinegar. All right, we're going to put this in the pot now. So that's step number two. Now, step number three, 
Oh, it's getting happy already. You don't want to cook them long. We'll just blanch in these here. How long? Three to five minutes, depending on the size of the bird. If I was doing this with duck, it'd be like 15, 10 to 15 minutes. The thing of why I do it with duck like this, to blanch it, is that eliminates a lot of the fat, okay? Not that it bothers me to have a lot of fat. <laughs> Third pot, we're going to make this sauce. I've got plum jam. Oh, yeah, plum jam. Should be the name of a group. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome plum jam. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little white wine vinegar. I got a little onion, a little bit of honey as well, and ginger. And we're just slowly going to put the heat on and make this glaze, okay? It's like a little glaze. We're making a little jam there. Low heat. All right, now, let's come over here, check the wings. Oh, we're almost there, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. We're almost there. Now, what we're going to do before we do the wings going to go back and we're going to take out our first squab. Okay, be careful if you just do what I did. Yeah. That's when you would use like a kitchen fork. <laughs> we had one of those yesterday. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take the squab and put it right inside of the happy, happy juices. It's like diving into a swimming pool of happy juices. Can you see? This guy is smiling right now. Oh, look at that. Can you imagine if that was me? I'd be like that too, you know? So now we're going to go back for the next little squab and get rid of some of that there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then into the happy juices. Now, we're just going to roll them over. Okay? What we're doing, folks, right here now is we're flavoring this, this bird. You can't see it, but we're flavoring. You see, and you just kind of keep doing this and basting it a little bit. Okay? You can't see it at home. It's giggling. It's so happy <laughs> in here right now. This thing is hysterical. All right. While that's getting happy, let me show you how we're going to finish these great drumettes. Drain them real good. Stay, please. Then we're going to season them because right now they're vulnerable. That's when they come out of the hot oil. They're ready. So we got a little salt little essence, and then we'll put those in the, there. You see that? Now, we're ready for fun. That delicious sauce that we made, okay? You see how much it's reduced down? You see? We just pour that right over that like that, okay? And then what we do, talk about getting happy. We just sort of lightly, oh, 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 oh. we toss that like that. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, okay? A little bit of drumettes, all right? We got chicken, we got squab, but we come back another notch! Welcome back, everybody. Emerald Lagasse here. Woo! Asian poultry. My brain is like going berserk right now. Just what I did while you were getting one of those frozen things or whatever you were doing, after uh, about 30 minutes, 
that the birds sit in that happy juice, okay? Then you take the birds out of the happy juice, put them on a little rack, make sure they can start drying out, okay? But look, particularly with squab, you know, this is probably already about half cooked or half baked, however you want to refer to it. <laughs> then what I did is I strained that liquid. Why waste that liquid? And I strained it, and now I just have the reserve of the liquid, and I'm reducing it out while my sweet hoisin style, if you will, plum glaze, plum sauce, is simmering on there. Now, you want to make sure what you do with these birds, make sure that you really dry them up good, okay? Dry them up really, really good. See, I just go in there, just like a dentist, you know, just. <laughs> what? <laughs> you got to make sure they're dry, Doc. Yeah, I know, I know. I don't have a hair dryer on here. <laughs> Look, it's just, you know, it's, you got to go in there and just. Right. <laughs> dry them up. All right, after they're dry, Here's what we do with them. 360 degrees, we're going to fry them. You with me so far? Yeah. Great. While we're waiting for our friend in here, what's going to happen is that the skin now is going to get super crispy. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Now, Make a little steamed rice. Rice would go great. You could do a little stir-fried vegetable. See, look, they're not going to take long, folks. Look at this. But that skin's going to get so crispy. Can you see that? Can you feel the love in here? Yeah. Whew. <laughs> Whew. All right. Now, while that's finishing up, real quick before I show you the finished finale of this dish with the squab, I got chicken thighs, about 30, 40 cents more than the uh, first cut that we had. I love doing things that, you know, creatively, that you can take inexpensive stuff like this and turn it into gold. And this is sort of a wonderful stew, as I said earlier, with cinnamon, a little star anise, sherry. So chicken thighs. Again, go back to the uh, chicken police. Make sure 52 times you wash your hands. Fill the bathtub, throw the chickens in there in cold water, take them out, bring them in the kitchen, wash them in that sink. Whatever, how many ever sinks you have? Use the whole house. You see, because I used a lot of chicken, I put extra sinks in my house. So instead of doors, I got sinks. So every eight, nine feet, there's a sink. You should come over sometime. We have a little sink parties. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is in this sort of braising pot, we're going to start getting this thing hot. Now, our squab. Let me show you before we go to the thigh department. Look at that. Does that not look good? Oh, come on, babe. <laughs> so now we're going to be careful there. Now, here's what we do. Don't they look good? Sometimes I do them with coffee. You put coffee in that liquid like that? Shh. You know those other guys will be. Oh, yeah. And we do one very similar like this. There's a liqueur called Nicello. It's a walnut liqueur. Ha-ha! Mm. <laughs> put some of that on your duck, baby. Now, let me just get to the point here. Little steamed rice. Well, what I do, see, I just, like, pretend like this is going to be like a nest. See, this is like a little nest. <laughs> so we got the nest thing going on. And then we just take the squab. You see, we put one over here. And we put one squab over here. 
Then we take that sauce that we reduce down. See? And it's kind of salty and gingery. So I like to just put that right over the rice like that. You know, you can sop it all up, you know. So we just kind of do that. And then after you get enough of that saltiness back, then I just go back with the little plum, that little plum thing, and you just, you just sort of plumb it like this and plumb it and you just plumb it and plumb it like that. Plumb it like that. You just kind of bam, just kind of bam it like that. Oh. Oh. Woo. I can't take much more of this. <laughs> All right, back to the chicken thighs. We're going to take some of that Asian essence, season it up. Got our little skillet here, fat side down. We're going to start sauteing these nice and brown when we come back. I'm going to show you what they look like. Stick around! <laughs> Welcome back. Emma Lagasse here. If you just landed, shame on you. <laughs> Cooking Asian poultry tonight. What we want to do is we want to get that first side of the thigh really good and pretty brown. Try to render that, that chicken, the fat of the chicken, as much as you can. Can you smell that already? Yeah. Oh, wait. Just wait. Now, most of these kind of dishes that I do, especially with chicken like this, I'll end up taking it out of there and, you know, then either adding a roux or doing something, la, 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 la. This is a little different. You see, that schmaltz is in there. I like that word. I'm using it right now. Schmaltz. So, here's the deal, okay? We're going to flavor this. First thing that we're going to flavor this with, and wait till you start smelling it in here. We're going to use some cinnamon stick, okay? Ground cinnamon. You know, ground, cinnamon's one of those spices I can see at least half the faces in the audience right now. You're all guilty. You have them spices in that pantry for about six, seven years. <laughs> you ain't open that crap. And let me tell you, that's exactly what it is, is crap. Throw it out. Start again. All right, I won't go there. But you know cinnamon sticks. They're in there. But watch what you do is we're going to add them inside, and you're instantly going to get this. And then I have star anise. Very, very interesting spice to use. We're going to start with that first. Smell that? Now, here we go. Time for fun. We're going to add a little ginger. Scallions or green onions. Little H2O. Soy sauce. This is a Chinese cooking wine. It's like a rice, kind of like a rice wine. Beautiful stuff. Ah, it's a little rice wine amongst friends. A little rice wine vinegar. Now, remember, it is vinegar, so we don't want to go too wild with this. Okay, you with me so far? All right, now, once that starts coming up to temperature, folks, here's what you're going to do. You're going to use your knob, okay? No, look. A lot of people, they just think, oh, let's just turn it on full blast. I'm sure we're going to go for a ride sooner or later. <laughs> it's a cooking thing. It's got it's to love. You've got to have a little love in there. So 
The reason why I say use your knob is that this, once it comes up to temperature, you got to turn this down to like medium low. Medium low. See, that's what, the, see, it's cooking now. It's not rushing. <laughs> Never heard of that. What do you want to be? I'm going to be a head rush. <laughs> so, once it comes up and you turn the heat down, put the lid on it, which, what it does is it seals in. So a lot of the evaporation, that's why you use lids. So you don't want a lot of evaporation. You try to make rice without a lid, psh, you're in trouble. Forget it. Go through the drive-thru or something. It ain't going to happen. That's why lids are made. Now, here's the deal. Once this does come up to temperature, what we're going to then do is we're going to add a little chicken broth to totally cover the chicken. Are you with me so far? All right, now, 45 minutes. It's a beautiful thing. Now, here's how you finish it. In about that time, this is what it will look like. You're going to say to yourself, goodness, goodness, goodness. Look at the color of that. The color of that, oh. A lot of the color from that is coming from the star anise and the cinnamon. Here's how I like to finish this real simple. When they get nice and tender, oh, I know. You ain't seen nothing yet. We're just warming up. So you get those chicken thighs, cost about $4. Okay? Oh, wait, wait, we're not even, we're not even out the box yet. The rabbit ain't even out the gate. Now watch this. Here's what we do, folks. We're gonna discard the cinnamon six. See, they swell up like that after they cook with liquid for a while. Oh yeah, it's amazing what they do. Now, cinnamon sticks are in there. Let me show you a quick trick. We'll take a little cornstarch, which is a thickening agent. A little H2O. Dissolve the cornstarch, okay? This is cold, this is hot. One's gotta be hot, one's gotta be cold. You can't put hot to hot or cold to cold because then it's not gonna thicken up and you're gonna have a mess on your hands. You're gonna have all these strings. Hey, if you want strings, go ahead. Add the cornstarch. Now, we're gonna let that sort of just come up for a second into temperature. And then what we're getting ready to do now is finish this dish. We're gonna add some rice again, okay? Little of that sticky rice like that. Love that. Got the chicken. Then what we're gonna do here, oh yeah, babe, little chives. Then we come back over here to the pot. Now the sauce is nice, nice with the cornstarch right over that. And you got this cinnamon star anise and this really, really wonderful stewed Asian chicken, okay? Little garnish. Hey, there you have it, okay? Hey, when we come back, I'm gonna show you a super dish from my restaurant, Chop Chop. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna show you this stir fry that we do at my new restaurant, Chop Chop. And we use these rice noodles. When you buy them in the package, they're like hard. And then it's really easy to do. You just cover them with some warm, hot water. Warm or hot water, okay? And they, they cook like very fast. Like these are 30 seconds are gonna be done, okay? You can either drain the water, cool them down if you want, and then when you're ready for the stir fry thing, it's fantastic. Now, I got my wok going here. Diced chicken meat, little crushed red pepper, little five spice, some salt. Excuse me, this is sugar, actually. You always want to taste that, right? Yeah, to get fooled, you know? and then some salt and pepper. Now, what we're gonna do in the wok is we're gonna take a little bit of vegetable oil. And the only reason why I'm starting with vegetable oil is that I love sesame oil, 
but it can overpower things if you use too much. So I'm going to use it in another ingredient that I'm going to show you in a second. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start just kind of quickly walk this chicken a little bit. Now, while that's happening, make sure you walk is hot. This even could have been a little hotter. Now, while that's happening, what we're going to do over here is we're going to make this killer sauce. We're going to use some green onions, garlic, some ginger. This is where I'm going to use some sesame oil, okay? Sesame oil. We're going to add a little bit of hoisin sauce, that plum sauce, right? A little bit of that in there. Some soy. A little bit of chicken broth, okay? And what that does now is going to give us a quick little, little sauce. Perfect. Now, get the chicken going. Once the chicken cooks halfway, check this out now. I got carrot, onion, bell pepper, shiitake mushrooms. You can go crazy, whatever you want. Celery, I got some squash. I got a little bit of bok choy. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like all together. Stick around, we'll be right back. So now, I added the onion and the bell pepper. I'm going to now add the julienne, a little, a little carrot, mushroom. The thing about the stir fry, right? You know, people don't realize that's what it's called, stir fry. So you can stir fry it fast. It's all, it's all in the prep. It's all in chopping all of this. That's the hard work. Right at the end, what I'm going to do now is this. I got bean sprouts and some cashew nuts. But here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to sort of, look, stir fry this real fast. OK? With that chicken, you want to keep the vegetables all nice and crunchy. Then what we're going to do now is we'll add a little salt. Remember all that sauce that we put together? Look, that goes right in there, OK? Oh, yeah, babe. Bean sprouts. Cashews. Now, right at the last minute, what we want to do, see, we got it really nice and cooking here now, is now what we're going to do is add those rice noodles right inside of that. You see that? This wok, beautiful, nice and hot right now. It's come up to temperature. So now, how I want to serve this, folks, it's a great family style platter. Because you can just kind of do this, okay? Go right over to it. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and then we'll just kind of do this here again. Right over to it. And a little more over here. You know what's really cool, too, is that the kids go absolutely crazy over this kind of dishes. And, uh, well, that's why we put it on the menu at Chop Chop. It's kind of got the noodle and the vegetable thing all going on. Anyhow, folks, I just kind of either garnish it. You can garnish it with chives. You can maybe garnish it with a little bit of bok choy leaves if you want, kind of like a little flour, okay? <laughs> or you can just kind of do a little green onion. But I'll tell you what, we've had an absolute blast doing some Asian chicken dishes tonight, didn't we? Absolutely, huh? There you have it. So, great chicken, drumettes, unbelievable fried with that sauce, and of course now the chop chop chicken. Hey, I'm Emerald Lagasse. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody. Yeah.